phosphorus becomes the central atom, and I'm going to build around it to create a symmetrical looking molecule. Always build back to the central atom. When I place phosphorus in the center, I place four electron groups around phosphorus. And you can see that here, they've done one, two, three, representing a bonded pair, and then here's a lone pair. So I begin kind of getting the structure. What I've then done is assigned the electron pairs around chlorine to finish their octet. So every atom in this pair has eight electrons. Two electrons represented by a dashed line, because that's a shared pair of electrons. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 24. Where did the other two go? Oh, down here. Step three. Classify the electron groups. Are they bonded or are they non-bonded? For phosphorus trichloride, I can clearly see three bonded and one non-bonded pair of electrons. Once I've classified three bonded and one non-bonded, I simply use my Vesper chart. Four electron domains, so the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. Of the four, three are bonded and one is non-bonded. We can classify this as trigonal pyramidal with a bond angle of 107 degrees. Trigonal pyramidal have bond angles less than 109.5, which we recorded earlier as 107. Again, the lone pair of electrons pushing those chlorines a little bit closer together, expanding the cloud up on top of the phosphorus. So really, all we're saying, and it's going to be one practice after the next, we've got to build the correct Lewis dot structure. Simply count the number of bonded and unbonded pairs, bring it over to your Vesper chart, and simply read it. The electron domain geometry, then I find the number of bonded to non-bonded pairs, and I can find very quickly the molecular geometry. You practice. Predict the molecular geometry of bond angles in SI F5. Again, thinking about the number of at or electrons, silicon, who lives in group 4A, and it will be the central atom. Fluorine, who lives in group 7A, but there's five of them. The negative one here gives me one extra electron. So 39 plus one, I've got 40 electrons to place around the silicon. Silicon, and I see five fluorines. So what I do is automatic and expand the octet. I've got to attach five fluorines back to silicon. The only way to do that is to create five single lines to attach them. And let's see what we have so far. So there's the five fluorines. We've expanded the octet for silicon and created a spot to attach all five fluorines. If we place seven well, six more dots, giving us plus one to attach back. We get the total of seven that fluorine had. So two, four, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, thirty-four. 40. Each line counts as two electrons. We've just placed 40 electrons around the central atom. Sil or silicon pentafluoride with a minus one. That minus one says you get one extra electron to place in, so that's where I totaled up 40. We expanded the octet to create bonding positions for all five fluorine. Now it's as simple as reading the chart. Five electron domains, all five are bonded, leaving zero unbonded. Using my Vesper chart, I look up five, five, zero. Five electron domains, five bonded, none unbonded. I have a trigonal bipyramidal molecular shape.
trigonal bipyramidal. Let's see if we were right. Trigonal bipyramidal. Perfect. We expanded the octet. This is like the before and after slide. Not realizing the answer was right on the next slide, I drew it out. Alrighty. Again, a couple of things. If we have an extra electron, you're going to see that negative one charge. You get to add one in, giving us a total of 40. Thinking about bond angles, again, I didn't draw mine with the correct geometry, but I could. Knowing that we have uh, two axial positions and then three equatorial positions. Predict the geometry and bond angles of PCL3. I think we did this slide, darn it, 49, 50, I went backwards, my bad. Let's go forward. Predict the molecular geometry in CLOF2, O2F, CLO2F, must be a long day. Chlorine, central atom, fluorine, oxygen, oxygen. Totaling the number of electron pairs, again, this is a Chapter 9 skill, just coming up with a, a electron um, Lewis dot structure. We could see that of the central atom, three are bonded, one is not bonded. So I would look on my Vesper chart, four, three, one. Four electron domains, three are bonded, one is non-bonded, giving us a shape of trigonal pyramidal. To show that on the chart, four, three, one, trigonal pyramidal with a bond angle of 107 which they're just saying here is less than 109.5, but we could be more exact, it can be 107 degrees. Representing three-dimensional shapes on a two-dimensional surface, how do we show molecular geometry, paper and pencil drawing? What we come up with is, is kind of a, a format to show, is it coming out of the paper or going into the paper? And we're gonna do that with straight lines if they're in the same plane as the paper, a solid wedge if it's coming out of the paper at you, and a hashed line, I usually call that a dashed line, hashed line going into the paper. So for instance, if I'm trying to actually show some three-dimensional on a two-dimensional world, we start to get a look like this. Linear, of course, would be a, a, right in the same plane. Trigonal planar, all in the same plane. They're gonna lie flat on the table, and so will a bent molecule. But finally, I start to see things that I need to represent coming in and coming out of the paper, as in a tetrahedron. If A represents the central atom, I have to show one coming, one coming out and one going into the back of the paper, and that's all they're showing you is when you see these solid lines that's coming out at you, and if it's going back into the paper, you're going to see that dashed line there. And if they're all represented as, uh, you know, just in the same plane as a piece of paper, you'll just see a straight, normal-looking bond. So dashed lines here represent going into the paper, behind the paper, if you will. Coming out at you will be these dark, solid hashed barks. And then, of course, it's just really trying to show molecular geometry in a flat piece of paper. With this particular model, we have one, two, three, four, five, six electron domains. All six are bonded. So we would read six, six, zero. Six, six, zero gives us an octahedral shape. To best represent, there's two fluorines going back behind the paper, two fluorines coming out of the paper, and the top and bottom fluorine would be parallel on the same plane as the paper. Again, just to kind of share with you how we're showing molecular geometry in a two-dimensional world. Suppose we have larger molecules that have multiple central atoms, and that's more common than not. Many molecules have large structures with many interior atoms. 